So here on this slide, I put a wider variety of organisms and just look at the incredible beauty and diversity of life. When these organisms are so different from each other, how do we even begin to study them? So this is the science of classification, the science of grouping organisms based on their similarities and differences. This was begun by a scientist named Carolus Linnaeus. He founded taxonomy, the branch of biology that deals with grouping and naming organisms. He invented the binomial system of nomenclature or of naming organisms. Binomial for two. So each organism's name consists of two words, genus and species. So here are a couple of examples. So here the tiger, its scientific Latin name is Panthera tigris. Panthera is the genus name, tigris is the species name. Notice that both names are italicized. The genus name always begins with a capital letter the species name always begins with a lowercase letter. Now, the lion is called Panthera Leo. Now, you're probably already aware that a lion and a tiger share a lot of similarities, but they're also different from each other. So because of their similarities, they belong to the same genus, Panthera, but because of their differences, they are considered different species. And later in, later in the year, you will learn how scientists actually define what a species is. So a genus and a species are different taxons, different groupings of organisms. And now let's look at some of the bigger groupings. So all of life can be separated into three domains. Then each domain is separated into multiple kingdoms. Each kingdom has multiple phyla, each phylum has multiple classes, each class has multiple orders, each order has multiple families, each family has multiple genuses, and each genus has multiple species. So the species is the most specific grouping. Like I said, you will learn more about how we decide which organisms should be different species later in the year, not yet. So this is the most specific grouping. Domain is the most general grouping. Now, how are you going to remember this domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species? That's a lot, isn't it? Well, I'll teach you a mnemonic that my biology teacher taught me. So deer, king, Philip, came over for good spaghetti. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Dear King Philip came over for good spaghetti. That's not too bad, right? So let's look at how this applies to a specific organism. And here is the gray wolf. Its Latin name is Canis lupus. Lupus is the species name. And it belongs to the genus Canis that also includes other related animals. Uh, such as um, dogs and jackals. Then this genus belongs to the bigger grouping, the family Canidae, which also includes foxes and coyotes. The family then belongs to the even bigger grouping of carnivora, the order, and that includes also cats, badgers, bears, raccoons, even walruses and seals. Then this order belongs to the class Mammalia. Mammalia includes all of the organisms in these groups, as well as other orders that include um, elephants, um, dolphins. Then class belongs to the bigger phylum. Phylum belongs to the even bigger animal kingdom. And the animal kingdom belongs to the domain Eukarya. Now, don't worry, you don't have to remember all of these names, all these groupings for the wolf, and you will not need to know all the different phyla classes, orders, families, and genuses that exist. However, I will ask you to remember the three different domains that life can be separated into. And these are eubacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Now, eubacteria and archaea are both considered to be prokaryotic. 
I'll sometimes refer to prokaryotic cells simply as bacteria. U bacteria means true bacteria. U is true. Archaea are another kind of bacteria. Um, they're known, many of them are known for actually being able to live in very extreme environments like extreme salt or extreme heat. Okay, now eukarya, this domain, they are considered to be eukaryotic. Now soon uh, you will learn what differences are between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. For now, let's just stick to um, prokaryotic, meaning simple, smaller cells, and eukaryotic cells being bigger and more complex. And later you will learn more about this. Now, each domain can then be separated into multiple kingdoms. I will not ask you to remember the kingdoms for eubacteria and archaea, but you will learn about the kingdoms that eukarya can be separated into, which are the protists, fungi, plants, and animals. This four kingdom system for the eukaryotic domain has actually been recently reorganized, mostly due to problems with classifying the protists. But for now, to keep things simple, not to overwhelm you with too many details, let's just stick to this four kingdom system of classifying eukaryotes. Now, notice that eukaryotes includes a wide variety of organisms as different as this amoeba and this fox. How come such different organisms belong to the same domain? When here we have two domains that are superficially seem pretty similar. They're both different types of bacteria, they're prokaryotic, they're single-celled. How come there are two different domains? Well, they used to actually be one group. But after scientists started studying more about the DNA, they discovered that archaea um, actually share a lot of similarities with eukarya. So archaea are in some ways similar to eubacteria, and in other ways they're similar to eukarya. So that's why this special group gets its own domain. And so later you will learn more about the characteristics of each of these different types of organisms. So now let's summarize what you learned today. First, we discuss some vocabulary for the different parts of life. Then you learn about the shared characteristics of living organisms. And then about the science of classifying and naming organisms based on their similarities and differences. So I hope you enjoy this lesson and that you're excited to learn even more biology.